Thank you for your interest in ENVR 171. Here is a short review of what to expect. Everybody out there, as well as to uh, six students who have actually joined us here in the classroom, a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, we are very excited and we hope you're also excited about this uh, course we're about to begin, which is entitled Water Health and Sustainable Development. Um, those of you who are out there in the ether, uh, either in the United States or in some other part of the world, you should feel just as welcome as all the students in this classroom because we're going to try to create a community of learning that will embrace all of you in interesting ways and from which we expect all to learn a great deal. My name is Joseph Hunt and I come from a somewhat unusual background. Oh yes, I can't, I can't start without <laughs> quoting one of my favorite poets, W.H. Auden, who once wrote, Many people have lived without love, but no one can live without water, and I've always assumed poets know a lot more than I do, so I say trust the poet. Indeed, the early introduction w I'd like to make tonight is that we're really in a, in a crisis that the world hasn't quite woken up to, and obviously you sense it too or you wouldn't be here. Um, <coughs> and the other quote that I always like to begin with comes from Fortune magazine, which after a meeting in Davao in Switzerland where the major investors were looking at the future, in particular of large infrastructure projects, water was considered the single most important economic issue facing our future, an issue of international security, promising to be what oil was to the 20th century, the precious commodity that determines the wealth of nations. And I would say yes. And let us proceed with the view that a major meeting that occurred in 2015 at the opening of the General Assembly of the United Nations uh, endorsed a, a group of sustainable development goals that are expected to guide our sense of global governance and indeed our sense of environmental governance from 2016 to 2030. And we'll, we'll look at them in, in a little more detail later, but uh, really water is one of the important cross-cutting issues that, that, that in a sense floods, no pun intended, uh, or drenches these goals. Here is an example of the type of thinking you'll learn to do in this course. If you look at healthy cities, they talk a lot about resiliency. And this graphic is from uh, future cities who actually adapted it from the World Health Organization. And so they say, what do you do to adapt to shifts? What do you do to, to, to address things like climate, to address these large-scale issues like health? Well, you check vulnerability, you determine the need for action and select measures. These are all the things we've been doing in our class, right? We've been talking about impact assessments, right? We've been talking about looking at these categories and trying to understand what are the changes and do they fit in here and how can we address them, right? Using multiple line, multiple color graph, which I overlaid lines uh, to make it a little easier for you um, and for myself as well. Uh, is we have to think about city-specific growth, right? So we looked originally at these huge averages across continents, which are useful in a sense, right? But when we want to make changes, we have to look at the specifics within each city. So in order to apply these concepts, we have designed an engaging course structure. The previously mentioned five assessment methods are summarized for you here, so you can pause and take a look. Also, the course themes, in terms of the methods and applications of the course, are provided here. Finally, the expected final paper themes, although these are flexible, uh, are provided. And some contrasting case studies that we have used in the past. One of the best examples of environmental health impact assessment is the Mekong River Basin. For health impact assessment, we look at schistosomiasis in China and malaria in Java. We also looked at the social determinants of health in the Healthy Cities Framework. No textbook is required for this course, and the readings are provided. You will gain analytical skills, methodological skills, information on policy debates, and to summarize, as Albert Einstein has said, those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to reach out at the link below or the QR scan above.